Today we're going to do another how to draw the basilisk lizard. I am the snake artist and my mission in life is to get people to appreciate art and wildlife. Today we're drawing the basilisk lizard or the Jesus Christ lizard but this time we're going to be drawing him running across the surface of the water. I'm going to start marking up basic shapes. So here I'm starting with an oval. It's going to be the body. Here is a triangular oval which is and that's going to be the head joining the neck nice long tail I'll work out where the legs are just putting a couple of brackets there for legs at the moment and for the arms I'll thicken those up but for now that's the basic shape of a running basilisk lizard now to shape this a bit I'm going to put the eye here just a circle mouth is going to be there and a bit of a jaw there because I've got those funny shaped heads that are sort of a bit bulgy in places. So these half circles are describing the shape of the head. The line above the eye and behind the eye. And a half circle over there which is the other eye. Or rather it's the scales covering the other eye. The crests, it's a double crested basilisk lizard. It has two crests up there. Now I'm going to thicken up this arm here. So I see those. Just going over those thin lines that I've done. Thicken them up. And decide where to put these legs. So I'm going to maybe drop this leg down a little bit. And have those big toes covering his front arm. So I'm defining the tail a little bit more. I'll work out where to put things. You can see I'm thickening up the back leg and working out where the splashes are going to go. Because when these guys walk on water, it's, uh, it's, it's very clever, but it also is a bit messy in that there's splashes everywhere. I'm going straight with a paintbrush here. What I'm going to do is mark out where the water is going because the water is going to be covering the lizard in a lot of places. A lot of the water droplets and things like that are going to be over the lizard. And see how I'm doing drops here almost like a string of pearls connecting to the bottom part of the foot. Now I'm just putting in random circles here and there and sometimes not circles, sometimes sort of a blobby shape. So I'm using my thin liner brush again. Which seems to be a favourite of mine at the moment. Now I'm going to start marking in the lizard. Of course the liner is great for doing long lines, smooth lines. And that's why I'm using it to do the tail. I'm going to mark in as much as I can with this small liner brush because it gives the nice free flowing lines. And I want those free flowing lines to be in the final product. So because these lines are so bold, they so sort of stand out in the final drawing. It's the usual way I work. I go from thick lines to medium lines to really thin lines. So you can see under the foot there, it looks pretty confusing, but that's just the way it is because there's water droplets, there's toes flaying out, there's all sorts of things happening there. So I'm just going to fill in some of the details. Marking in the front legs or the front hands, I'm just sort of pretty much guessing. I'm not being too concerned with accuracy because it's an all over picture of a lizard running. It's about as accurate as I can without copying a photo or a dead specimen. I'm just going to pencil in where these crests are going to go. Just a little guideline. So the pencils here are only used as guidelines. It all gets rubbed out later. And now I'm in with the ink pen. A nib pen. Which I'd like to tell you where I got this from, but I can't remember. 
I can tell you is it works good and it's very cheap from uh, eBay somewhere. But it's just called a drawing nib. So the ones from Delita, they look pretty good, which I will be using their fine one here. So if you're looking to get into nibs, uh, Delita sell them. I think if you was just to do a Google search and just looked up manga drawing supplies, somewhere along the lines you're going to get nibs like this because the lovely thing about mango is that it has made this stuff popular and so we can still use these wonderful nibs lovely little circles running along the body part of the beautiful patterns of this animal and of course we're going to have some wrinkles or veins I think they're just wrinkles there which a lot of dragons and iguanas have this guy's probably more closely related to iguanas than dragons. Even though it looks a bit like a fantasy dragon. It looks a bit like a dinosaur too. Damn, I love this lizard. Okay, here I'm cross gonna cross hatch. I am laying down dark tones by putting lines close together. But up here I'm going to be cross hatching and I'm cross hatching in between the circles. I'm using cross hatching because it's a little, little bit scale like. The important thing in this illustration is to have lots of very dark darks and lots of light lights. It's always been my problem is to be able to simplify the light bits because I always wanted to throw more detail in. <laughs> Great dinosaur like head. Speaking of dinosaurs, one of my most favourite artists of all time is William Stout. Just Google him, check him out, or, or just Google William Stout dinosaurs. I love his dinosaur illustrations. They're more simplistic than mine, but much more brilliant. I've always been inspired by William Stout. So he's one of my all-time favourite artists. So yeah, go Google that name there. Brilliant, brilliant guy. So more cross hatching. Looks a bit of a mess at the moment. We're going to fix all that up. Because what we've got here, you've got highlights, you've got your dark tones, you haven't got anything in between to blend them. So once we blend the in between bits, it's going to look better. This guy has some stripes on his tail. So again, I'm using the cross hatching to say, okay, it's a scaly animal and to describe those stripy patterns on the tail. Looks a bit simplistic at the moment, doesn't look quite right, and this is where, when you are drawing, sometimes don't give up, just push through another half hour or 20 minutes, just push through and see how, you know, if, it, if something is, does look like it's not gonna work, just push through anyway and just try, because I think this is gonna work. Sometimes, you know, even professional artists like me, sometimes they don't work. Sometimes you put them away and you start again. I think this is going to work though. Even on these sail-like fins on the, on the back, um, that's sort of putting a mid-tone, that's sort of helping blend it in a bit. But you know, so I don't go all the way to the top. I leave light bits. The detail on the leg here is going to help separate water from leg and that's going to help and that's going to help sort of see the whole thing a bit better but I don't mind if it's a little bit confusing there because when it runs along the water things do look a bit of a splashy confusion okay so now I'm coming in with my Delita fine pen it's a bit thicker and more bold than a mapping pen but much finer than my normal drawing nib. With this sort of basically puts in your mid-tones, it softens things. So it's going to it's going to soften the light bits against the dark of what I've put down before. Just throwing in the occasional little tiny bit of detail here and there. Giving it a bit of a mid-tone. do love my details and I've got to be very careful not to put too many in. But also I have to put in enough details that I enjoy it so I want to come back and do more. 
putting a sort of a bit of a crescent shape in all the drops, droplets of water, to make them look like water. And the occasional tiny little circle, which I do like to shove on lots of things. I do like sticking like a little oval or a little circle in the blank detail sometimes. Speeding up a few bits so things don't get too boring. If you are actually following along, you can actually just pause these bits and sort of catch up. And if you're just watching it for the sake of entertainment, maybe pick up a few handy hints. You're probably grateful for me speeding up bits. On the leg there, I'm darkening underneath the droplets of water to make the water sort of stand out a bit. So I'm making the legs and the toes a little bit darker in places. Now popping the scales on the lips. And blending them in a little bit. I also darkened under her chin a bit to give it a bit more weight there. And just drawing a few little scales here. And see that sort of blended things in a bit. Let's get rid of these white bits and replace them with scales. It's blending into the darker bits a bit better. You see here I'm softening the lines between the dark section and the light section, softening them with a little bit of detail. I'm using a fine nib now just to put some water effects in the background. Bits are not that important because we don't want to take away from the main action that's happening. I'm just shading in a little bit of a wave there, like a mini wave. Now the next trick is to rub out all the pencil lines, scan it, and, and here it is. The finished drawing. And that was how to draw the Basilisk Lizard. I know you guys that support this channel, you love wildlife, and you want to get the message out there that wildlife is beautiful. I hope I'm giving you guys the tools to do that in a creative way. Until next time, I'll see you later, and maybe check out some of these other videos.